Hi there. So I want to have a conversation about a topic um, that I don't know if it's controversial really, but it, it, it is one of those topics where most people will be on one side and, and um, I just want to put it out there. So the topic is, are you a real estate investor or are you a real estate gambler? Now, I'm going to use the 2008 time frame as an example. I believe in hindsight, we will look back at 2019 and have the same kinds of feelings. But let's talk about 2008 because I invested before it, saw what happened at the top when it all crumbled, and what happened afterwards. So let's talk about the gambler first. A real estate gambler is someone that believes only goes up forever, right? You believe in the press uh, headlines. You are taking maximum leverage. You are consistently doing cash out refinances like yearly. And you don't really care what the cash flow is because in your mind, you're like, shoot, if I lose $500 a month, who cares? I'm going to refi in 12 months and get all that money back. Gambler, right? If you are going into new markets today that you never visit, gambler, right? There are stories after stories of people that are going to get crushed because they're real estate gamblers and they're telling themselves they're real estate investors. No, I'm sorry, you are a real estate gambler. Now let's be clear, real estate gamblers sometimes pay off. If you walk up to the craps table, put it on 17 and it hits, but that's gambling. It could work out, it might work out, but it's unlikely to work out. And shoot, if you stay at that table one more time, bye-bye, gonzo, out of here. So another thing, you're a real estate gambler. If you believe that multifamily, like all these class C properties out there that are being talked up as easy value add are going to pay off in five years. If you are being an LP, a limited partner, and just putting the money up, I have bad news for you. Many of you are going to be in trouble, right? Some of them are going to work out. No question. There are some great syndicators out there, but I promise you there are more syndicators out there than there are great ones. And on this particular channel, we actually had a real estate syndicator say, you know what? I'm out. Sold the entire $25 million portfolio. I think that's extremely brave and a good fiduciary would do that. It's not about chasing more and more returns. We have already seen two or three Ponzi scheme-like things happening in the real estate world where people are taking money in and they're paying off old investors so they can keep their returns and hopefully get new money in. People, come on. This is real estate gambling. Now let's flip it over. If you're a real estate investor, you know your buying criteria. You've done your homework in your market. And most importantly, you're making the decisions. You're not just writing a check and running away, right? Hey, so-and-so's got it. They've been doing great for five years. Everybody's been doing great for five years. The next five years are where the true great ones are going to make their money. Think about that. When the deck is in your favor, like the last five years, everybody who is a syndicator has been winning. It won't be that way in five years. I'm sorry. So as real estate investors, do your homework. Frankly, that's what I teach in my course. Do your homework. Learn your market. Spend 30 days looking at it every day, taking notes. Then let's understand the math behind what a bad, average, good, and great deal are. It really is that simple, right? If you do the homework and you make the decisions, Right, and you're out there, and you know what it says my market average is a four percent yield. And if you take my course, you'll know what I'm talking about. But if your market is an average of four percent yield, if you can work out a deal that you find and create five and a half percent, that's a good deal, right? You're up twenty percent ish, right? Four percent to five and a half percent is more than twenty percent. You you get me? It's actually more like four, thirty percent. Or, you know what, if a market's four and you get a six and a half, maybe that's a great deal. All of these things are possible. You just have to treat it as a side hustle with a focus. You need to learn your market. 
the reason I was able to successfully invest for 15 years is I looked every day for 10 years, 10 years, right? And I knew my market. I made choices. I knew what a good, I knew what a bad deal was, right? In this example we're talking about, it'd be a 2%. If my market's producing four and I found a house that's two, it's either too expensive, too much make ready, or doesn't rent for a lot. Those are the variables that drive this. So if you understand the difference between a real estate gambler and a real estate investor, I'd love to hear from you. I truly believe there are too many real estate gamblers today, and that's unfortunate. The market's been great for five years, and gamblers are getting drunk and partying and wasting their money, and the party's just about over. It is time to be a real estate investor. Learn your market. Learn what it produces and then go execute on the deals that make sense to you. I hope that makes sense. I'm not, I don't want to be a downer. I think there are great opportunities out there today, but people do your homework, invest the time, right? I created a course. It's next to nothing. It's $199 and you get to join my private Facebook group where I interact with you and ask, answer questions and all of that stuff. So in the end, if you want to know more about me, check out my book, One Rental at a Time. It talks about the entire 15-year journey, the rise up, the crash, and the return, and how we survived by being conservative and knowing our market and knowing our numbers. All right, take care. Have a great day.